on World News Tonight. Global Corporation. Prime Minister Modi and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz put together a planet-focused funding package to reach climate goals. Oil embargo. The European Union is taking a stand against Russia's spread of violence with fresh restrictions on the country's oil exports. Monster blaze. New Mexico engulfed in flames as large wildfires tear through the US, leaving millions helpless and acres singed beyond repair. And glamorous gala. Celebrities line up on the red carpet to flaunt magnificent new looks which have spectators starstruck. This is Adha Derana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening. Thank you for joining us on World News tonight. We begin tonight's broadcast with PM Modi's trip to Europe. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz pledged 10 billion euros to help India achieve its climate goals after meeting its Prime Minister Narendra Modi in Berlin. But the leaders remain far apart in their stance on the Ukraine war. A red carpet rolled out in Berlin as Narendra Modi started his three-day visit to Europe. India's Prime Minister was warmly greeted by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz on Monday, with both leaders co-chairing the sixth consultations between their respective governments. As well as a commitment to green energy, top of the agenda for the talks was Ukraine. The, Krieg. the war and the brutal attacks against the civilian population of Ukraine show how unrestrained Russia has been in violating the fundamental principles of the UN Charter. However, the subject has drawn ire as far as India's position on the war is concerned. New Delhi, which for decades was supplied by Russian arms, has so far refused to denounce Vladimir Putin's actions and the invasion of Ukraine. At the beginning of the crisis in Ukraine, we immediately called for a ceasefire and emphasized that dialogue was the only way to resolve the conflict. We believe that no party can emerge victorious in this war. Everyone will suffer losses and that's why we are for peace. Contrary to Europe, India has also significantly increased imports of Russian oil since March, with considerable discounts provided by Moscow. Talk has also emerged of Indian business taking advantage of a potential market gap, as a delegation of exporters heads to the Russian capital later this month seeking trade opportunities. There was, however, some strengthening of economic ties from Monday's discussions as Germany pledged a further 10 billion euros for bilateral cooperation with India. Next up for Modi on his whistle-stop tour includes a visit to Denmark, where other Scandinavian leaders will be present. Then it's the final destination of France, where he's set for face-to-face -face talks with President Emmanuel Macron in Paris. The European Union was prepping sanctions on Russian oil sales over its invasion of Ukraine. Germany says it's now ready to stop buying oil from Russia, clearing the way for a European Union ban on crude imports from Moscow. This comes as the region's largest economy says it could weather shortages and price hikes. In a major shift in its stance, Germany says it's prepared to support an EU-wide embargo on Russian oil. To this end, the country's foreign minister said in a televised interview Monday, that Berlin is making preparations. The comments come a day after Germany's economy and climate minister explained that he expects his country to be fully independent of Russian crude oil imports by the end of summer. Meanwhile, the EU's energy policy chief says that paying in rubles for Russian oil as requested by Moscow would breach the bloc's sanctions. Paying in rubles through the conversion mechanism managed by the Russian public authorities and a second dedicated account in Gazprom Bank is a violation of the sanctions and cannot be accepted. The 27-member bloc further explained that there is no immediate risk to the region's supply security with deliveries to Poland and Bulgaria continuing via alternative routes from Greece and Germany. The news comes as our Ukrainian commander at the Azovstal steel plant in Mariupol confirmed with CNN that a large plume of smoke is coming from the facility where thousands of people have been sheltering for weeks. The soldier, however, would not provide details on which part of the plant was hit, noting they do not want the Russians to correct their aim. The video was first posted on Telegram by a pro-Russian channel on Monday evening local time. In related news, the U.S. believes that the Russian military's chief of the general staff visited Ukraine's Donbas region last week. 
But a U.S. defense official explains that Washington cannot confirm media reports that he was wounded while fighting there. The Pentagon official said that the Russians have made only, quote, minimal gains in Donbas over the past days. The official also added that Moscow has launched over 2,100 missiles at Ukrainian targets since the onset of its invasion, saying that the U.S. has sent over 5,000 Javelin anti-tech missiles to Ukraine so far. The official further explained that the assistance does not impact on Washington's defense readiness condition. Israel's foreign minister demanded an apology after Russia's top diplomat said Nazi German leader Adolf Hitler was of Jewish descent in an effort to liken the notorious dictator to Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Israel's foreign minister on Monday fiercely denounced comments by his Russian counterpart who suggested that Nazi leader Adolf Hitler was of Jewish descent. The it is an unforgivable, scandalous statement, as you said, and also, of course, a terrible historical mistake, and we expect an apology. The diplomatic outrage is fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a war not just destroying lives, but one that critics say is twisting history. Moscow has justified its unprovoked invasion of its neighbor in part on claims it wanted to, quote, denazify Ukraine trying to paint the democratically elected government of President Volodymyr Zelensky in the image of Nazi Germany under dictator Adolf Hitler, who tried to exterminate European Jews. That comparison provoked scoffs and disbelief based in no small part on the simple fact that the Ukrainian leader is Jewish. An Italian journalist asked Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov about this on Sunday. Speaking through an Italian interpreter, Lavrov responded, quote, when they say, what sort of Nazification is this if we are Jews? Well, I think that Hitler also had Jewish origins, so it means nothing. He added, quote, for a long time now, we've been hearing the wise Jewish people say that the biggest anti-Semites are the Jews themselves. The statement of Foreign Minister Lavrov is uh, false, is uh, despicable and is uh, deemed of the strongest condemnation. Dani Dayan is the chairman of Yad Vashem, Israel's memorial to the Jewish victims of the Nazi Holocaust. Uh, he's basically engaging in Holocaust inversion, making the victims of the Holocaust the perpetrators, and uh, that is inexcusable. Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid said the Russian ambassador would be summoned for a, quote, tough talk over the comments. There was no immediate comment from the Russian embassy. Qantas Airways will fly non-stop from Sydney to London after ordering a dozen special Airbus jets, charging higher fares in a multi-billion dollar bet that flyers will pay a premium to save four hours on the popular route. Qantas Airways is launching the world's longest non-stop commercial flight from Sydney to London, and it's picked up a dozen Airbus jets for the ride. CEO Alan Joyce announced the multi-billion dollar deal on Monday, with flights set to kick off in late 2025. This is a big day for Qantas. It's a big day for Australian aviation. I think it's a big day for world aviation. Uh, today, Qantas is making the biggest aircraft order in its history. Qantas shares surged to their highest in months on the news, which comes as the Australian airline predicted a strong recovery in the domestic market amid signs of a bounce back in international travel. Joyce says those signals gave the airline the confidence it needed to make the big bet on its future. And we always said that Qantas needed to transform to survive. We were 11 weeks from going bankrupt in 2020, but we also had to do this to make sure that we took the opportunities when the market recovered and we could grab those opportunities. And today we also made a market announcement of how Qantas is performing. And we've seen unbelievable demand coming back, both domestically and internationally. The Qantas order marks the culmination of its Project Sunrise challenge between Airbus and rival Boeing to create aircraft capable of the record-breaking flights, which Airbus won in late 2019. The Qantas planes will have around 100 fewer seats than rivals British Airways and Cathay Pacific, but will be specially configured to carry extra premium seating. Large wildfires grow across New Mexico, forcing thousands to evacuate. Two fires that merged into one giant blaze torched over 100,000 acres. Now 4 million people in four states are under red flag warnings of fire watchers. 
the series of exploding out of control wildfires tearing across New Mexico is tonight poised to get even more destructive. Two fires merging into one monster blaze has alone torched over 100,000 acres. It's devastating. You don't know what's going to be there. With 65 mile an hour winds at its back and drought conditions in its path, nearly 300 structures are gone. Thousands fleeing the flames. We have nothing to go back to. As thick smoke smothers the Santa Fe region, whipping winds will again fan ferocious flames today. Some 4 million people in four states are under red flag warnings or fire watches. 50 mile an hour gusts fueling some of the 15 major blazes burning. Still early in this disastrous fire season, so far over a million acres, the size of Rhode Island has gone up in smoke. Twice as much land as this time last year. And with winds shifting, even more will be lost. We do have our lives and I am thankful to God for that. But I miss my home and it's just gone. Adding insult to injury, one of the two fires creating the largest in New Mexico was purposely set as a prescribed burn. But after kicking out of control, what firefighters were trying to prevent is exactly what they are now facing. Let's go in for a short commercial break. More world news on the other side. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Former U.S. President Trump endorsed venture capitalist J.D. Vance in a crowded Ohio primary contest to represent the Republican Party in a race for an open U.S. Senate seat. And this election will also test whether Trump can sway GOP party races. A Republican primary in Ohio on Tuesday is one of several key tests this month of former President Donald Trump's ability to play kingmaker in party politics. Trump stunned Ohio Republicans in April by endorsing J.D. Vance, a venture capitalist, author, and former Trump critic in the crowded Republican primary race for U.S. Senate. Mark Caleb Smith is the director of Center for Political Studies at Cedarville University. I think you could argue this entire primary has been really for one person's vote, and that's Donald Trump's. And I think many people were surprised when, when Vance earned it. Uh, he was a strong critic of President Trump before the 2016 presidential election, but he does have some pretty strong financial backing, uh, particularly from Silicon Valley, and I think that was attractive to the president. Vance, a Yale-educated lawyer who wrote the best-selling memoir Hillbilly Elegy, has gone to great lengths to display his loyalty to the ex-president and mimic his tone. In a recent campaign ad, Vance seemed to echo the former president, claiming that lax enforcement along America's southern border was killing Ohioans. Following Trump's endorsement, a Fox News poll showed Vance leaping 12 percentage points and into the lead. While Trump appears willing to forget Vance's past criticism, some Ohio Republicans may not. The test for Trump this month extends beyond the Buckeye state. Trump-backed candidates in Pennsylvania, North Carolina and Georgia face challengers seeking the Republican nominations to run for U.S. Senate and governor. I think probably the most important factor is how much of a control does Donald Trump have over the GOP nationally, as well as here in a place like Ohio. And it's going to be interesting to see, I think, whether Trump's hold will maintain itself. While one poll showed that J.D. Vance is leading going into his Tuesday primary, other high-profile primary candidates endorsed by Trump, such as doctor and television host Mehmet Oz, are trailing in their respective races. Trump on Sunday tried to rally support for Dr. Oz and his Ohio pick while speaking in Nebraska, but confused the name of J.D. Vance with one of his main rivals, Josh Mandel. Afghanistan's supreme leader appeared publicly for only the second time in six years on Sunday, telling worshippers celebrating Eid al-Fatir the Taliban had achieved freedom and security since seizing power last year. In a rare and unexpected moment, the supreme leader of Afghanistan spoke inside the Eidga Mosque on the final day of Ramadan. Ibatullah Akunzada kept his back turned to the crowd. Filming was banned whilst officials didn't allow journalists to approach him. It's only his second public appearance since becoming Taliban leader six years ago. I'm so happy that I can't even describe it. I dreamed of praying with the supreme leader to hear his voice and to see him. 
I swear that I'm so happy that I cried when I heard his voice. I had two dreams in my life. The first was to see the return of the Islamic State, and the second was to see our leader. Ibatullah Akhanzada's discretion has regularly given birth to rumours, whether that's on his true level of influence within the Islamic Emirate or concerns over his health. During his speech on Sunday, he congratulated worshippers on the return of security to the country since the Taliban took control last August. Even if the number of attacks went down across Afghanistan, this Ramadan has been particularly deadly for the country. A number of these attacks have been claimed by the Islamic State group. In Kabul, mosque attendance has been lower than usual for the last day of the holy month due to the fear of further attacks. China's commercial capital of Shanghai was dealt a blow as authorities reported 58 new COVID cases outside areas under lockdown in a setback following news that no cases had been confirmed outside these areas for two days at the weekend. Reports of new COVID-19 cases outside of Shanghai's lockdown area could spell a setback for the city's battle against infections. Authorities reported 58 new cases on Monday after two days of no new confirmed cases outside quarantined areas over the weekend. However, other data showed encouraging trends, with overall local cases down to 6,804 from 7,189 the previous day. Despite the drop in infections, more fences were erected at some residential blocks in Shanghai on Monday. Tough coronavirus measures in Shanghai have stirred rare public anger, with millions of the city's 25 million people stuck indoors for more than a month. Some sealed inside fenced-off residential compounds and many struggling to secure daily necessities. Meanwhile, in Beijing, authorities pressed on with testing millions of people on the May Day holiday. China's zero COVID policy is increasingly out of step with the rest of the world, where many governments have eased restrictions or thrown them off altogether, with the goal of living with COVID. Actress Amber Heard has fired her crisis management team days before she is set to take the stand in the $50 million defamation case brought by her ex-husband Johnny Depp. Tonight, a mid-trial attempt at damage control in the defamation battle between two Hollywood stars. Actress Amber Heard firing her crisis management team. Sources familiar with the situation telling she expressed frustration with coverage of the trial, which may have favored her A-list ex-husband, Johnny Depp. When you hire a PR firm at this stage in the game, what you're saying is that you don't like how things have been going. The PR pivot coming after Depp wrapped his testimony last week in which his legal team played disturbing audio of the couple fighting with Depp defending some actions and denying others. Put your cigarettes out on someone else. You have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up. Um, I think that was another grossly exaggerated moment of Ms. Heard, so I don't I did not put a cigarette out on her or throw a cigarette at her. Support mounting on social media with hashtags like justice for Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp is innocent. Now a change.org petition demanding her be dropped from her upcoming project Aquaman 2 racking up hundreds of thousands of additional signatures over the weekend. Depp is suing ex-wife Amber Heard for defamation after she wrote a 2018 op-ed in the Washington Post describing herself as a public figure representing domestic abuse. The article never names Depp, but his lawyers argue it clearly referenced the couple's marriage and dealt a major costly blow to his career, pointing out after the piece was published, Depp was dropped from a $22.5 million deal to star in Pirates of the Caribbean 6. However, Disney has never stated Johnny Depp was dropped from the film due to the op-ed. The actor seeking $50 million in damages, Heard, who's countersuing for $100 million, is expected to take the stand Wednesday. Her lawyers vowing to shift the focus to Depp, painting him as a, quote, monster who would abuse her while drunk and high. Heard has also denied abusing Depp. The question tonight, can a new PR team turn the tide in the court of public opinion? Welcome back. For more news, let's take you around the world in a minute.
A form of acute liver disease or hepatitis that was first reported in Britain and whose cause is unknown is now being detected in Asia. Indonesia's health ministry said that three children died from the disease in April. The World Health Organization announced last month that cases of a mysterious hepatitis had been reported in the United Kingdom, the United States, across Europe and in Singapore and Japan. Amazon workers voted against unionizing a second warehouse in New York City, representing a defeat for labor organizers just weeks after they celebrated their first U.S. win at the nation's second largest private employer. The ratio of new female employees at South Korea's small and medium-sized enterprises was slightly higher than at the country's conglomerates in 2021. According to data released by the Korea Small Business Institute, about 44% of those who were newly employed last year by SMEs with less than 300 staff were women. An expert is warning North Korea may test tactical nuclear weapons at its Pyongyang Ri nuclear test site that the regime was recently seen restoring in a bid to miniaturize the nuclear warheads. Recently taken satellite images of the area appear to show the North has been repairing a tunnel at its closed nuclear testing facility. Hundreds of abortion rights supporters gathered in anger at the U.S. Supreme Court after an unprecedented leak showed a majority of justices poised to overturn the Roe v. Wade decision that legalized abortion nationwide. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you have missed any of the stories we had tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other than English. We're leaving you tonight with stunning visuals of the Met Gala as Hollywood stars flaunt their glamorous outfits on the red carpet. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>